Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're adding fractions. This is a worksheet from Math Drills. There'll be a link in the description below. Make sure to check out that website. Lots of great resources there. But this particular fractions worksheet, we are doing both common denominator problems and unlike denominator problems, okay? So I'm gonna start with number nine here. We're gonna skip around a little bit, but this is there's a reason why we're starting with number nine, and that's because they have the same number in the bottom. The bottom number is known as the denominator, okay? So if we were to have a pizza, per se, and we were to split it into seven pizzas, I'm gonna to try to do my best. There's four, five, six, seven, okay? And we had one of those pieces, and then we have three more, one, two, three, how many pieces would we have in total, okay? So this problem is easy because it's the same type of thing, okay? We already have it from the same pizza with the same amount of cuts. One seventh plus three sevenths, okay? So in this case, it would be you add the top number, so one plus three, but again, it's one, two, three, four parts out of seven, seven total parts, so it stays the same in the denominator. It's four sevenths is our answer. So as long as the denominators are the same, you just add the tops, okay? Add the numerators, and then you keep the denominator the same, okay? That seven needs to stay the same. All right, now let's go over to a unlike denominator problem, and I'm probably gonna start another problem. Let's start with, I'm gonna start easy. Um, okay, I've decided, number 10, straight down from this, okay. So here we have a problem, and it's a little bit different, and let me explain why, okay? So first, let me get my pizza again. This time I'm going to use a better circle. So we got that circle. Copy, paste it. Okay, so the problem is different now. Now we have one half, okay? So we have this half drawn here, okay? And that's one of those halves. And on this pizza, we have one six. So one six looks something like, if I can get it going here, and it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. One six looks something like this. So you can see I have one six plus one half. Now I guess you can't say it's two because then what do I say it's out of? I have one piece from one and then one piece from another, but I can't say it's just two halves because this one is clearly smaller than this one. And I can't say it's two six because clearly this piece uh, is way bigger than just one six. So I can't call it two six. That would be wrong also. So what do I do? Well, I have to make sure that they have the same denominator. I need them to line up. The easiest thing to do is always look at the smaller denominator. In this case, it's the two. And I wanna convert this fraction right here so that it has the same denominator as the six, okay? Now, equivalent fractions are very easy to make. As long as we keep the denominator the same, Sorry, as long as we multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, we create equivalent fractions. So obviously one half is the same thing as two fourths. Two quarters out of four is half, and one half is the same thing, okay? Now, if we have one half, how do we convert that to have a six? Well, we think to ourselves, all right, so I have one half, and I want it to be a six in the bottom, just like I have over here. I need to think to myself, what do I multiply by the top and the bottom? Okay, well, first of all, I just think about what do I need to multiply the two by to get to six? Okay, what do I multiply two by to get to six? You can do six divided by two or just do two times three. So I know it's three, and if I write a three in the bottom, I also have to write it in the top. And the reason why is because technically, this is multiplying by one and I've seen this done before in lots of places, it's this big one here. Three divided by three is equal to one, and if you just multiply any number times one, it stays the same. One half times one is still one half. So that's a legal move to do, you could say, okay? Regardless, the, the algorithm essentially is this, okay? The procedure is this. If we want it to be a six in the bottom, we have to multiply three by the two, and then we also have to multiply it in the top. So one times three and two times three. So in the top, we have three. In the bottom, we had six, of course. So we can rewrite the problem. That's the second step, okay? So step one, we are rewriting the denominator. Rewrite denominator. Okay, step two, we are multiplying the numerator and the denominator. So multiplying top and bottom. And three, we rewrite the problem with the common denominator, okay? So here we have one six that we had before, and instead of writing one half, which does me no good because I can't add the six and the two together or 
the half and the sixths together, I write 3 sixths because that's equal to 1 half. And so now I have my rule, look, 6 6, aha. Now we can add it, 4 over 6 is my answer. And now I can reduce that, okay? And you should watch the video that I'm gonna do on reducing real soon. And reducing means I can divide the top and bottom by the same thing. So it's kind of like the similar um, equivalent uh, fractions, but in this case, it's going reverse. So I have two over three, so two thirds is my answer. Okay, and if I were to add this third over here, or this six over here, you would see that it really looks like it's a third of a pizza and that's two thirds of a pizza. There's one third, two third, and three thirds when you add that six, so that's two thirds there. Let's do more quick examples. So if you want, go watch that again. I also have another video specifically on fractions called Wes Explains Fractions. Maybe I'll have that pop up at the end of the video, but essentially this is what we're doing. So we have seven over 18, and we always wanna concentrate on the smaller fraction, okay? We want this three to become an 18, so what do we multiply three by to get 18? We want that to have 18 instead of three. So I need to multiply that by six. And if I multiply six in the bottom, I have to multiply by six in the top. And that's six over 18. So instead of writing one third, guess what I'm gonna write? I'm gonna write six over 18. It's the same thing, but now it has a common denominator, common, common. And I can just add the tops. So seven plus six is 13, 18. It's the same thing. Before I had thirds and 18ths. They're not the same thing, so I don't know what to call them, but here I know what to call them. They're 18ths, and I can't reduce because 13 is prime. Here we have three fourths. I want it to be 20, okay? And these are all easy situations where um, one number can easily become the second number. There's much more difficult problems with uh, unlike denominators that I'll get to eventually, okay? But anyway, with this one, we're gonna multiply by what to get 20? We want this to be 20, okay? So what do we multiply by? We multiply by five to the bottom and the top. So that gives us 15 over 20. That's the same thing as three over four, okay? It's equivalent. And now we can add this to one over 20 and we get 16 over 20. Now we can actually reduce this. I've talked about that. If they have a common factor and they do, it's four and you get four over five for that one, okay? We've already done nine. I guess I'm not going in numerical order, but that's okay. Here's an easy one, okay? We have one over 20, and then we have one over 10, but I don't want it to be 10. I want it to be the bigger number, okay? Generally, that's the plan. You change the smaller number to the bigger number, okay? Always check that first, at least. So 10 times two is 20, so I'm gonna multiply two in the top and the bottom, so we get 20, in the bottom, two in the top, two over 20. Three over 20, final answer, because 20 cannot be divided by three. We'll do one more just for fun. Uh, how about this one? So we have one half here, one half. We want it to be 20 instead. We want this to multiply by something, so we multiply it by 10. And if we multiply in the bottom, we also have to multiply in the top. So we have two times 10 in the bottom gives us 20. We have one times 10 in the top, and that gives us 10. So now our new problem, as I rewrite the problem, is 10 over 20 plus 9 over 20, and that equals 19 over 20. And that's our final answer. There's a few more to left to do on this worksheet, but that should be pretty simple for you to do. If you have any more questions on this, be sure to leave a comment. If you need more help with fractions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.